Hello everyone, it's Nikki Gordon Bloomfield here from Transport Evolved. I am without car today because my wife needed it for work. The RAV4 is possibly going to be back on the road very, very soon. There will be more details on that in the coming days. But I thought I would give you a video today explaining what goes on inside one of these, or rather, what goes inside one of those? An electric car charging station, because it's a question that I get asked on a regular basis. Why can't I just put a plug onto one of these and plug my car into a socket on the wall and charge it? Now, as this is our backup charging station for our Nissan Leaf and our J1772 guest charger, if someone comes and needs a charge, I'm not gonna take this off the wall and take it apart so you can see what's inside. But what I am gonna do is show you what's inside this, which is my portable electric car charging equipment, an EVSE, a brick, if you will. And it came to the US all the way from Europe. So it looks different, but it operates in the same way. Now, for those who don't know, this is a type two inlet, a Menenkes socket, and you can see that it's different to the American J1772 plug. And that's because in Europe, this is the standard socket that exists on all public charging stations or, or most public charging stations that are not DC quick charging units. And to use a charging station like this with an electric car, you need one of these. There are some advantages to having this cable in the back of your car. Although it's a bit of a pain on a wet, cold day, you have to roll up your cable by hand and put it in the boot or the trunk of your car. It does mean that there are less problems with cable theft in the European Union than there are in the US or Canada. Now we're just gonna undo all these screws and then we can take the top off. Now, as you can see inside this, there are three separate modules and the back end of the socket. Now, for an American charging station, instead of this being a socket, there's a cable that runs from the charging station to the plug that the car then plugs into. The other thing you'll notice here is on this particular charging station, because this uh, socket can operate um, using three phase power, you'll notice that there are a couple of wires that are not connected. That's because this uh, charging station is only a single phase charging station and so some of these cables are not actually used in this version. The other thing to bear in mind is that when you're looking inside a commercially built charging station or you're looking inside the EVSE brick, the emergency charger that comes with your electric car, um, you won't see these three discrete components. Instead of these three discrete components, you will see a, a motherboard with various components on it. It will look a bit like, a, like any other electronic device, like a computer or, or inside a VCR or anything like that, really. Um, but on this unit, it's really nice because these three things are separated, so we can see really easily what they are. Now this big old relay here takes the power and um, there's a big switch inside here that's operated by low voltage wires, which you'll see here. And when the control module is happy that everything has been connected to the car properly, you've plugged in the um, plug into the front of the car properly and all of the communication has taken place between the car and the charging station, then it sends a signal which activates this relay and powers up the mains power that goes into the car. Now the reason why this exists and the reason why this exists is because if you didn't have a mains relay, it would be theoretically possible for someone to come along and stick their fingers into the high voltage socket and give themselves an electric shock. So for the next bit, we're actually gonna look at the end of the plug that goes into your car. Now you'll see that there are three big connectors and two little ones, at least on the J1772. And if you're looking at Menenkes, the Type 2 socket, there is a similar arrangement of, of small pins and big pins. Now the big pins carry high voltage and the small pins carry low voltage or signal. And what this little unit here does is that when you plug in your 
your charging station to your car or your car into your charging station, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, the first connection to be made is the ground, which is this one here. And that's the first thing that's connected when you plug in. And these two pins are kept open circuit, which means there's no voltage that flows through them until that relay is switched on by the control unit. So what you then have are these two little signal pins here. And what happens when you plug it into the car is that the car and the charging station have a little conversation. Um, it's nothing complicated. It's a conversation that is controlled by sending specific voltages down the cable. And those specific voltages are produced by changing the resistance in the circuit in the car and in the charging station. Now the car has a set of circuits on board that checks its side to make sure everything's okay. And this unit is a very, very basic set of circuits that makes sure and waits for the right signal from the car to start charging. When the car says, yes, I'm ready, and the charging station, there's no problems with the ground fault or anything else, then it will activate the relay and the car will start charging. Inside every commercial charging station is a set of circuits designed to make sure that you've safely plugged the car in properly. The plug is all the way in. There's no ground faults between the car and the charging station. That the car is happy and ready to accept charge and the charging station is ready and happy to deliver charge. And if all of those situations have been met, then the charging process starts. Now this all takes a couple of seconds when you plug in and your car starts charging. Now there are some other circuits that are very clever too. For example, in a J1772 charging station, there's a little switch that is connected to the button that you press to unplug the car. And when you press this button, it breaks the circuit, one of those little low voltage pins, it breaks the circuit, which tells the charging station, oh, someone's unplugging, I better stop delivering power so that when I unplug it, there's no arcing of power between the pins on the charging station and the pins on the car, which helps promote uh, a long life for the charging station and again, lowers the risk of anyone getting electrocuted. Now, electric car charging stations never used to be that complicated. It used to be a case of you plug your car in, you switch the switch on the wall, and you get power. And a lot of people say, why can't it still be like that? Well, a lot of it is down to, to liability and a lot of it is down to usability. There are many different connections for electric car charging stations. Um, you only have to think about the Tesla units, for example. Tesla has its own proprietary connector in North America. It has a modified version of the European Type 2 in Europe. And then, of course, you have the European Type 2. China has its own set of connectors. Uh, the US has its preferred set of connectors. So while the actual physical unit that plugs into your car might be slightly different, the way these charging stations operate is all pretty much the same. I hope you've enjoyed this little look inside an electric car charging station and helped you understand what's inside and what you're paying for when you buy one. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And you can support us at patreon.com as always from as little as $1 per month, head to www.patreon.com forward slash Transport Evolved. I'll be back later this week with the usual TEN Transport Evolved news roundup. So until then, have a great rest of your week. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and keep evolving. <laughs>